So you kind of already know what factor theorem is, even though you may not realize it. Let's look at a function. If you look at that function, you should immediately be able to pause the video and think about what the x-intercepts or roots are of this function. All right, figure it out. You wanted to find the x-intercept, so you let the function equal zero, and then you use the null factor law to find out that x equals negative two, x equals three, or x equals negative three on two. We can generalize this, and we're halfway to having the factor theorem. So if x minus a is a factor of f of x, then f of a equals zero. Now we're getting pretty hectic here with our mathematical notation. But what I'm saying is that if we have something like x minus a in our function, say x minus three, that looks very similar, then um, if that's a factor of our function, which it is because we have x plus two, x minus three, and two x plus three are factors of our function, then f of a, if we were to put the number three into our function, then our function would equal zero. And we've already proven that because we solved it. We see that three is a solution of zero equals this function. So you're not really seeing anything new here. Again, this one won't be anything new to you, but if ax minus b is a factor, say something like two x plus three is a factor of a function, then f of b over a is equal to zero. In other words, the solution to this function will be, uh, or a solution, will be negative three over two. The negative of whatever that value is divided by whatever that value is. And even though you may not have spoken in those terms, you figured it out before using the null factor law. Now, this is kind of where it gets a bit new. And the new thing is that the converse is also true. We can swap these statements around and those statements will also be true. So the converse is just reading those sentences in reverse. If f of a equals zero, then x minus a is a factor of f of x. And if f of b over a equals zero, then ax minus b is a factor of f of x. Now, what does that mean in practice? It means that we can solve questions that look like this. The question is, is x minus two a factor of f of x equals x squared plus three x minus one? Now, it says here that if f of a equals zero, then x minus a is a factor. So this is my a value in this case, two, positive two. If I were to sub two into my function, f of two, that would be two squared plus three times two minus one. Now, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be uh, four plus six is 10, uh, minus one is nine. Well, hang on, f of two, doesn't equal zero. F of a did not equal zero here. So that means that x minus two is not a factor. So f of two did not equal zero. Therefore, x minus two, not a factor, not a factor. Now that's pretty unsatisfying. Let's look at a slightly different example. So is x plus one a factor of x squared plus three x plus two? Well, if it's a factor, then f of a equals zero, where a in this case is negative one. So f of negative, not negative two, negative one equals negative one squared plus three times negative one plus two. Negative one squared is one minus three plus two equals zero. Now, because f of negative one equals zero, Therefore, x plus one is a factor. So it's really that straightforward. You sub in your value, and if you sub in your value, you know that the negative version of that is gonna be a factor of that function. Now for these ones, it's very, very small biscuits. It's only quadratic. This is gonna work for any polynomial, whether it's a, a quadratic, a cubic, a quartic, a uh, hundred terms long, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's a polynomial, we're finding factors and we're trying to factorize it, uh, we can use factor theorem to help us out with it. It's, it's pretty useful.